Now, if you follow my channel, you know I'm a big fan of the HP Envy line. I've reviewed everything from the HP Envy X360, both the 13 and 15 inch laptops, and I've reviewed the HP Envy 17 in years past. Well, I wanted to find out what the new offering with the HP Envy 17 was all about. So I ordered one. It's got a 17.3 inch 4K display that is absolutely gorgeous, all metal design, everything you'd come to expect with the Envy, and it comes in at a, actually a pretty decent price. We're gonna get into that and more in this video. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the HP Envy 17, all new here for 2021. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from HP. Pricing for the HP NV17 starts at $879.99. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, I pretty much decked mine out going with the Core i7 1165G7. As far as the graphics are concerned, I went with the NVIDIA GeForce MX450 GPU. Of course, you could always go with the integrated XE graphics, but I decided to go with the MX450 to see how it would fare. I went with the 4K display. I went with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now, I only went with 512 gigabytes of SSD storage because you can easily upgrade this yourself, save a little money in that area. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box let's open it up lifting the lid you're greeted by the unit itself and we're going to get to that in just a moment but before we do that they also give you a setup guide along with some information regarding your warranty now of course you also get a 90 watt power adapter that has a barrel pin connector and of course you get the extension cord it also supports rapid charge we'll get into that in a little bit Now, holding the unit for the first time, I'm really liking this metal finish, of course. This is a premium feeling design. It's sleek, it's modern, and I like the way it looks. And at 5.6 pounds or 2.54 kilograms, definitely not the lightest out there, but it is a 17-inch laptop and is definitely portable enough to take with you on the go. Okay, let's check out the port selection. We're going to start off on the left side. We get one USB-A port, an HDMI 2.0 port, a Thunderbolt 4 port that does data charge display out, and finally a 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone combo jack. And moving over to the right side, you get a full-size SD card reader, two more USB-A ports, and finally, your charging port. Now, of course, you could also charge via that Thunderbolt 4 port. The choice is up to you. And I have to say, it's a pretty good port selection. Now, unfortunately, HP did include some screws underneath the rubber strips in order for you to access the inside of this laptop. Be very careful removing them. They can stretch. They can break very easily. But once you do that, you can remove the two T5 Torx screws as well, pop off the bottom plate, and there you go. You're in. Not the easiest in terms of putting those strips back, but once you're inside, of course, you can upgrade the RAM as there are two slots for RAM. Now, my unit has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 SD RAM. There are two 16 gigabyte sticks on here now as far as the ssd is concerned there is upgradable ssd although the one they give you gives you some pretty decent reads and writes as you can see from these results you get Wi-Fi 6 with a Bluetooth 5 combo, and both are working very well. Now, the good news is this is socketed in. That means if you have to upgrade it down the road, you can upgrade the Wi-Fi card, and that is always good. Now you have three choices when it comes to the display, a 17.3 inch full HD display that is non-touch and then you could also get one with a touch and then of course you can get the 4K UHD display and that is the one that I decided to go with. And I'm happy I did because it's a very sharp UHD display with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. Yes, that means this does have a 16 to 9 aspect ratio but at 17.3 inches it's not much of an issue because you get plenty of screen real estate. Now it is a glossy display, you will notice a lot of 
glare and reflections depending on the lighting conditions so please keep that in mind but it is a very nice display in terms of the black levels at 0.45 it also has good white points decent contrast not the best contrast i've ever seen but it has extremely good color accuracy with a very low delta e score of 0.74 that is pretty excellent it also covers the color gamut really well 98 percent srgb 93 percent adobe rgb 83 percent of the dci p3 wide color gamut and 88 percent ntsc making this an excellent choice for content creators to do lightroom photoshop and of course video editing now, HP claims this display will get as bright as 400 nits, and that is actually pretty accurate as I measured 400 nits in my testing, making this a good choice for both indoor and outdoor use. Although, keep in mind, in direct sunlight, you will have issues due to the glossy nature of the display. You'll notice that glare and reflections, as I mentioned. But the viewing angles are excellent, and it's great for consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube has been great on this display. Now, as far as the bezels are concerned, you get some really slim side bezels, a pretty minimal top bezel, and a little bit of a chin on the bottom, which is to be expected for a 17.3 inch laptop, but overall gives a nice appearance. It looks sleek. It looks pretty modern in my opinion. So this is the front-facing camera on the HP NV17, all new here for 2021. We're looking at a 720p webcam that, quite frankly, is not very good. It's very grainy, a lot of noise, uh, but the internal mics aren't too bad as far as that is concerned. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the audio quality as well as the video quality for doing Zoom and all your work from home needs with such a webcam. I'm curious to know, but to me, not very good. Now, unfortunately, that camera is not an infrared camera. That means you cannot log in with face recognition with Windows Hello, but there is a fingerprint scanner located within the keyboard, allowing you to log in with Windows Hello, and it worked pretty well, very responsive, and didn't give me any trouble in terms of setup, and again, very fast in terms of responsiveness. Now, as far as opening the laptop with one finger, you can't quite do it. The hinges are a little bit too rigid and stiff, which is okay because you won't get a lot of screen wobble. But as far as opening it up with one finger, not a big deal to me, but you can't really do it. You need to use two hands. Now, once you do open the lid, you are greeted by the keyboard. And I got to say, I'm a big fan of the keyboard. And for those number crunchers out there, you're going to love the inclusion of a numeric keypad. You want to do spreadsheets. You need to crunch your numbers. It's there. It's really convenient. Now, as far as the key travel is concerned, very excellent key travel i didn't feel like my fingers were bottoming out it also has excellent tactile feedback and there's also a multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment i'm not the biggest fan of the white backlight on the silver keys not the easiest to differentiate but having said that it did work okay now, it does have a glass precision touchpad that is actually nicely sized where two finger scrolling is buttery smooth extremely responsive and all the windows gestures work as you'd expect now, there are two bottom-facing speakers, and they're Bang & Olufsen tuned speakers that actually sound pretty good. I was surprised on just how rich and loud these got, and actually there was some bass. I would say these are really above-average speakers, actually really good speakers for considering that there are only two speakers on this laptop. Uh, really impressive. I'm, I'm very happy with them. The HP NV15 sports a 55 watt hour battery and I did six hours and 48 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. And considering that I have that 17.3 inch UHD 4K display, that's not too bad. But real world mixed usage, you're going to get anywhere from four to five hours depending on what you're doing. So please keep that in mind. Your mileage may vary. Now, they do supply you with a 90-watt barrel pin connector AC adapter that takes about an hour and 45 minutes to give you a full charge. Not too bad. And also keep in mind, you can charge via that USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 port. All right, let's talk about the performance. 24 hours in, I've had this laptop, and I got to say, the Core i7 1165G7, the Intel 11th Gen Tiger Lake processor, performing as we'd expect. Now, you also get the integrated Iris Xe graphics, but I opted to get the discrete GPU, the NVIDIA GeForce MX450, with two gigabytes of video RAM. And I got to say, it does help in terms of giving you a little bit of a boost when it comes to graphics performance. Of course, I still need to do my full review to give you all the final numbers i need to test gaming on this to see what kind of games we can play especially with that mx450 i'm not expecting to play AAA titles on the highest settings but definitely will expect a little bit of a boost based on that mx450 again stay tuned those numbers will be coming in that full review 
Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the HP Envy 17 here for 2021? 24 hours in, I got to say, I'm really impressed with it so far. I'm liking that bright, beautiful 4K display. I like that solid CPU, GPU combo with that uh, Core i7 1165G7 and that MX450. It's looking good so far. Loud and clear speakers. I'm really happy with this uh, improved speakers here. Looking good. Solid chassis with that metal build. I like the excellent keyboard with the numpad on it for those number crunches you're definitely going to like that it has a great port selection of course we'd expect that with a 17 inch laptop ram ssd and wi-fi are all upgradable which you gotta love and just seeing decent battery life looking at six hours and 48 minutes on my continuous web surfing test looking at anywhere from four to six hours depending on what you're doing so please bear that in mind the negatives here 720p webcam no 4k touchscreen option and it has a somewhat large footprint a little bit heavy to carry but not terrible, still portable enough to take with you on the go. So no real deal breakers here, ladies and gentlemen, looking good so far. Stay tuned. I will bring you my full review to give you even more information on performance, thermals, and the like coming up in my full review. So what do you think about this bad boy, the HP NV17? Uh, not the lightest in the world, as I mentioned, but definitely portable enough to take with you on the go. Like this all silver finish on it. Like the port selection. Decent battery life, considering this has a 17.3 inch 4K UHD display. It also has a uh, pretty decent performance out of that Core i7 1165G7. And I also have the MX450 on this, uh, making this a pretty interesting choice, especially if you're one who likes to do certain kinds of video editing, even 1080p video editing, of course. And you want to have that screen real estate that a 17.3 inch device can give you. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, check that link below for the latest pricing. It is on sale right now. I think it starts at about $869 or $879, which is pretty good considering what you're getting under the hood. The build quality is excellent. I'm really happy so far. And I'm looking forward to putting it through its paces to test the performance, thermals, the surface temperatures, gaming on it, and all that that it will cover in the full review. So stay tuned for that. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.